Um, hello friends, uh, uh, probably this is the uh, first time I am coming uh, face to face with you and uh, uh, I thought uh, this is one of the best ways in which I can uh, uh, handle this part of uh, the module that is uh, uh, numericals on uh, IC engine. Uh, there may be small difficulties uh, here and there uh, you know, which uh, you may face but uh, I am sure uh, one is of course you can directly message me and ask for the doubts uh, uh, and, and get them clarified and uh, the second thing is uh, you can uh, uh, wait till the college uh, starts and uh, in case there are any doubts uh, uh, what we will do is we will uh, discuss maybe if necessary uh, the, the problems once again. Now uh, what I will do today is uh, uh, only give you the equations on uh, uh, how to uh, attempt the problems or uh, some basic definitions uh, and so on and uh, I will be sharing one uh, word file which, is con which, which contains about uh, 9 problems and uh, all these 9 problems are from uh, uh, the question papers only. Okay, So previous question papers I have picked and uh, there are about 9 problems and some of them are uh, maybe similar. So. Uh, whatever is there you know we will try to cover the entire thing and uh, uh, see how uh, well equipped we will be in order to solve the numericals okay uh, uh, to begin with the, the first thing uh, what uh, you know you all need to understand is uh, uh, you know all ic engines uh, uh, when we talk about internal combustion engines uh, uh, they are defined with uh, you know two very important things one is called as the indicated power we, we, we can write it as uh, IP that is nothing but the indicated power and uh, the second one is the brake power. Now we need to cre clearly understand uh, what is the difference between uh, indicated power and uh, uh, brake power. Now just by drawing a line diagram uh, suppose uh, you know we have an IC engine and uh, most of you know what are the different parts of an IC engine and so on and we have a piston then you will have the crank the, co the, the connecting rod and so on then the two valves okay now uh, what actually happens uh, uh, in either cases whether it is a two stroke engine or a four stroke engine uh, what generally happens is uh, uh, the combustion anyway is going to take place in this space okay so this is uh, what we call as a combustion chamber or the enclosed space so there is going to be some uh, fuel which is basically a chemical and uh, this uh, fuel is going to be burnt and, and due to the sudden explosion there is going to be a large amount of uh, pressure wave uh, uh, which is generated and this pressure wave is going to act on the piston and uh, the piston is going to move down. Okay? Now uh, what happens is uh, 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 how much energy is released by the uh, you know, uh, fuel that we will see it later. But uh, when we talk about uh, the energy which is uh, uh, developed, okay, so whatever uh, capacity of doing work, uh, the, the energy as we call it, uh, is developed here in this area, okay, so that will be called as the indicated power. So indicated power is nothing but the power that is developed inside the cylinder, okay. Now, since there is going to be a certain amount of power in the, in the form of pressure wave, heat energy and so on, this uh, pushes the piston down, the piston comes down and uh, finally the reciprocatory motion of the uh, piston is going to be converted into rotary motion of the crankshaft. So this is the crankshaft and uh, you know, what power is available at the crankshaft will be called as the brake power. Okay, So it, this is nothing but B-R-A-K-E. So it is the brake power while this is the indicated power. So indicated power is nothing but the power that is generated inside the cylinder due to the uh, you know burning of uh, fuel or uh, you know due to the combustion of the fuel and uh, uh, you know, brake power is the power which is available at the crankshaft. Now do you think uh, uh, both will be the same or they will be different? It is quite obvious that uh, both of them will be different. Why should they be different? Whatever power is generated here, why is it that you know the entire power is not delivered at the crankshaft? Now the reason is whenever we come across mechanical elements uh, we have uh, uh, the, the concept of friction and inertia. 
So if this piston has to move up and down, you can see how many parts uh, will be moving. You have the piston moving up and down. Similarly, you have the connecting rod which is going to oscillate. Then you have the crank and then you have the crankshaft. So that you have so many parts which are moving. And in order to make uh, you know these parts move, uh, generally what happens is uh, there is some amount of energy or there is some amount of power which is lost. So the power which is finally available at the crankshaft, you will find that it will be lesser than the power which is generated inside the cylinder. So brake power will always be less than the indicated power. Okay, this is another thing which you need to remember. And uh, uh, you know, once we are able to calculate uh, the, the, the values of brake power and uh, indicated power based on uh, you know, what are the parameters that are provided in the problem, then uh, uh, another important, uh, you could say, terminology, another important uh, uh, parameter which we discuss uh, is called as the mechanical efficiency. So we write uh, mechanical efficiency as okay so this please do not confuse mechanical efficiency with fuel efficiency fuel efficiency is for one liter of uh, fuel whatever it is petrol or diesel how many kilometers uh, the vehicle is going to run you know that, that is a separate thing altogether but when we talk about mechanical efficiency it is nothing but the ratio of brake power to indicated power multiplied by 100 you will get it in percentage okay now if you look at this equation, uh, this this part, okay. Since brake power is less than indicated power, what will happen here? If this numerator is lesser than the denominator, then the mechanical efficiency will always be less than hundred percent. The mechanical efficiency of uh, an IC engine can never be equal to hundred percent. In fact, most of the time, uh, we find that the efficiency is. Uh, uh, somewhere near around uh, you know, 75 uh, to 80 percent. It doesn't go beyond that. The reason being, since the piston has to move up and down, and then you know there's a motion of the connecting rod, there's a motion of the crankshaft and the crank and so on. There is a lot of uh, loss in terms of uh, friction. You have to overcome friction. So the power which is generated inside the cylinder is called as the indicated power. The power which is available at the crankshaft is called as a brake power and since brake power is less than the indicated power, what is this remaining uh, uh, you know, difference called as? So we call that as the frictional power. So frictional power is nothing but the indicated power minus the brake power. Okay, so frictional power is nothing but the indicated power minus the brake power. Now, uh, once these basic uh, you know, small things are understood, then uh, we will see how to actually solve uh, the numericals or you know, generally what are the values which are given and so on. So, what I'll do is uh, I will again draw the, uh, a simple sketch and uh, we will see what is the terminology and uh, try to you know, derive the equations for uh, indicated power and uh, no, not only that we will also see how indicated power changes uh, for a two stroke engine and uh, for a four stroke engine whereas since you know the, the crankshaft is common uh, we don't differentiate with, uh, as the brake power of a, a two stroke engine brake power of four stroke engine uh, there's not much of a difference you know in, in either of the cases uh, there is a certain methodology by which you are going to measure the uh, brake power now how that is done, I will tell you. So let's say we have uh, an IC engine and I will be initially taking a, a, a general four stroke engine only. Okay, and, and uh, suppose you know we have the piston and uh, let's assume that this piston is at the top dead center or, or the uppermost part and the uh, piston will have a small crown now along this you will have the so somewhere here you will have the crankshaft so from here to here you will have the crank and then you will have the connecting rod okay so the connecting rod as you are aware will be something like this now since uh, this is uh, at the top dead center 
the crank sh- uh, the crank and the connecting rod are perfectly aligned they are in a single line so as this piston starts moving down you know, this oscillates and this rotates completely and uh, by the time it comes to the bottom dead center let's say somewhere here okay so if, if i say that this is the bottom dead center then we'll find that uh, the uh, the crank would have rotated by 180 degrees now as you know the cylinder is uh, circular okay the cross section of the cylinder is circular and in that the piston is fitted there has to be actually there has to be a very very small gap between the cylinder and the piston uh, without which the piston cannot move up and down at all if it is a kind of an interference fit then the piston will not move up and down you know it will have it will encounter a lot of friction so there is a very tiny gap uh, and and uh, to ensure that uh, uh, whatever uh, you know either air or gases are going to be here that is a uh, air fuel mixture uh, does not escape here and come on the other side uh, you have what are known as piston rings okay so piston rings are uh, uh, spring type uh, elements which are actually you know fitted into the piston and then the piston is pushed up so they 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 expand and they occupy the entire space and uh, you know act as a seal now uh, let's let's say that uh, uh, b is the diameter and for all practical purposes uh, let's assume that uh, uh, diameter of the piston and diameter of the cylinder are the same even though there is going to be a very minute difference we will assume that uh, both of them are the same so let's let d be the diameter of either cylinder or piston both are the same in some books uh, you know what is done is uh, you know this diameter is also called as the bore diameter b o r e bore diameter okay then let's say that l will be the stroke length okay i, I think by now you know what is a stroke because we have studied a two stroke engine and a four stroke engine l be the stroke length that is when the piston moves from the top dead center to the bottom dead center the distance what it covers will be called as the stroke length this is nothing but l i have not shown the walls and all these things uh, you know it is it is understood that there are going to be inlet walls exhaust walls and so on now similarly let n be the number of cycles per minute okay small n let it be the number of cycles per minute and capital n let it be the engine rpm okay the the engine rpm means the crankshaft is going to rotate so at what speed does it rotate uh, in in terms of revolutions per minute that let that be uh, denoted as uh, n now another important thing is uh, we know that power is generated uh during the power stroke okay so power is going to be developed during the power stroke during which the pressure inside here in this area is going to be maximum now what happens is as the piston starts moving down we know that the pressure reduces and you know as it comes down the pressure will be minimum then it goes up again and so on all these things uh, keep happening which means over one cycle there is going to be a variation in the pressure okay and we take uh, the average value of the pressure and that is denoted as pm which is nothing but the mean effective pressure okay so we write it as mean effective pressure okay so what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll also give uh, units that is uh, uh, diameter uh, d uh, let let us say that it is going to be in meters then the stroke length is also in meters n number of cycles per minute will not have any units uh, this uh, engine speed will have the units of engine uh, rpm that is revolutions per minute then mean effective pressure we will, let's say that it is expressed in terms of newton per meter square okay now because of the explosion work is going to be done on the piston okay so during the power stroke there is going to be work which will be done on the piston so when we say that the work is done on the piston uh, you now once you have understood these where d is the bore diameter l is the stroke length 
n is the number of cycles per minute, uh, capital N will be the engine RPM and the PM is the mean effective pressure. Uh, obviously, since we know that uh, uh, this is going to be uh, uh, cylindrical in nature, that is it is going to, going to have a circular cross sectional area, we can easily find out the cross sectional area. Once we know the diameter, that is if I know this value or denote this value as D. So if I say that this is D, then we can also write A as pi D square by 4. This will be in meter square. Okay, so where A is the cross section area. Okay, uh, you know, once we are familiar with uh, you know these things, then you know, normally what happens is in, in, in most of the numericals, uh, the bore diameter is given, the stroke length is given, uh, most of the parameters are given, uh, using which we are required to find out what is the indicated power. So what we'll do is uh, let's see how to find out the indicated power. There is a different methodology to find out uh, uh, brake power, which uh, you know I will explain it later. But uh, indicated power, uh, uh, let's see how, how to calculate indicated power. Now, we know that what is work? Work is nothing but force into distance. Okay, work is nothing but force into distance. Now, similarly, we know that pressure is force per unit area. So from this equation, hence, what do we have F equal to? F is equal to P into A. And in this case, I had, I had mentioned this as distance. Okay. Now work is being done on the piston and what is the distance which the piston covers? it will be equal to the stroke length. So finally, this work is equal to P into A into L. Okay? Because the distance which it covers is nothing but L, that is the stroke length. Now, and this P, instead of just writing it as P, I write it as PM, which is nothing but the mean effective pressure. So the mean effective pressure into A into L. Okay? Now, this is just the work done. Now, work done per minute. Okay, so this work done per minute will be equal to this W into number of cycles per minute. Because this was a very general equation for the work done. Now, if I want to find out what is the work done per minute, then work done per minute will be equal to this W into number of cycles per minute. So, this is nothing but W into small n. Okay. Now, uh, for a four-stroke engine, okay. So, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just take the example of a four-stroke engine. For a four-stroke engine, for one cycle, there will be how many revolutions of the crankshaft? There will be two revolutions of the crankshaft in case of a four-stroke engine. So, what actually happens here is, for a four-stroke engine, small n is equal to capital N by 2. Okay, capital N by 2 is the number of revolutions of the crankshaft. And, and the number of revolutions divided by 2 will give you the number of cycles per minute because you know that for every 2 revolutions of the crankshaft there is going to be 1 cycle. So, uh, small n is equal to capital N by 2. So, now what we do is uh, we use this value again in the same equation. So, we know what is W already. W is equal to PM into L into A multiplied by we had small n and what is small n? n by 2. So, we will si simply write this as
Okay. Now let's see what are the uh, units. This work done since it is uh, uh, for for uh, a cycle, we call uh, this itself as nothing but the indicated power. So indicated power will be written uh, in in this form. Finally, but before that, what we'll do is we will see the units. What were the units of uh, uh, PM? That is uh, mean effective pressure. Mean effective pressure was in Newton per meter square multiplied by L is in meter multiplied by A is in meter square, and this is per minute. Okay, revolutions anyway we don't write, so it is per minute. So finally, what happens to the units? This gets cancelled, so it is Newton meter per minute. Okay. Now instead of keeping it as newton meter per minute, what I do is I will divide it by 60. So when I divide it by 60, what happens is I'll get the units as newton meter per second. Okay. So I'll write this as P M L A N divided by 60 into 2. Why did I divide it by 60? I want to convert R P M into R P S. Okay. So to convert the uh, revolutions per minute into revolutions per second, I have divided by 60. Where did this n by 2 come from? N by 2 is nothing but uh, the number of cycles per minute. That is, it is equal to small n. And this we already know. That is, f into uh, l. Okay, the, or, or the distance. Force into distance is nothing but the work done. So work done per cycle and so on. So we have arrived at the, this equation. Now. What will be the units since I have divided by 60? The units will be newton meter per second. And what is uh, one newton meter per second? One newton meter per second is nothing but one watt. Okay. So this is nothing but the indicated power. That is the power which is generated on this side of the cylinder, which is given by P M L A N divided by 16 into 2 watts. Now. The same equation, if I write it as P M L A N divided by 60 into 2 into 1000, then now what will be the units? Here the units was watt. Since I have again divided by 1000, I will get the units as kilowatt. Okay, so the indicated power is P M L A N divided by 60 into 2 into 1000 kilowatt. This is for a Four stroke engine. This equation, what we have derived, is uh, uh, you know it holds good for a four stroke engine. Now, obviously, what will happen for uh, uh, a two stroke engine? We know that power is developed for every revolution of the current shaft. So, for a two stroke engine, for a two stroke engine, we know that n will be equal to capital N. Okay, number of cycles per minute will be equal to the uh, revolution of the crankshaft uh, or the speed of the crankshaft in RPM. So n is equal to capital N. So it is no longer uh, a small n is equal to capital N by two. So what happens in this equation finally for a two-stroke engine? So indicated power for a two-stroke engine will be P M. Everything else remains the same. L A N divided by 60 into 1000 that 2 vanishes because n is equal to capital n for a four stroke engine small n was equal to capital n by 2 so we had that 2 here coming in the denominator now what has happened because it is a two stroke engine we will have it is only 60 into 2 now it's very interesting you know you compare these two equations if you compare these two equations You know, uh, let's say this this value, whatever value we have, is about 50 kilowatt for a full stroke engine. Now, what will happen for the same size of the engine, for the same specifications? You know, everything remaining the same. What will happen for a two stroke engine? The same power will now be equal to 100 kilowatt because this two has gone now. Okay, so 100 divided by two will give me this equation. But now there is no two here, so it will be twice. That is why we say when we compare a two-stroke engine and a four-stroke engine, we say that theoretically 
a two stroke engine develops twice the power as that of a four stroke engine so these are the two important uh, equations one is this for a four stroke engine which you need to remember and the other one for a two stroke engine this now we arrived at this equation these equations because we had taken the units of uh, mean effective pressure as newton per meter square okay but uh, this can be expressed in uh, many forms so in some cases what happens is uh, the value of mean effective pressure instead of being expressed in newton per meter square it is expressed in bar so wherever uh, mean effective pressure is expressed in bar there will be a small modification to these two equations so what i will do is i write it here if pm that is the mean effective pressure is then indicated power for a four stroke engine see what will happen to the equation the equation becomes 100 pm lan divided by 60 into 2 the units will remain as kilowatt okay so now that thousand has vanished and we have got a hundred here because we say that one bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square okay so one bar is 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square so if i convert it if it is given in bar, if I convert it into Newton per meter square, I have to multiply it by 10 raised to 5. So, I will get a 10 raised to 5 here. We had a 1000 here, that is 10 raised to 3. So, 10 raised to 5 and 10 raised to 3 means finally, 10 square is what is going to remain, which is nothing but 100. So, 1 bar is 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. Similarly, for a IP indicated power for a 2 stroke engine will be 100 pm lan divided by 60 kilowatt that's it okay again you will not write uh, 2 here because for a two stroke engine we know that uh, small n is equal to capital n so if uh, mean effective pressure is expressed in uh, uh, newton per meter square this is the equation for the indicated power for a four stroke engine this is the equation for the indicated power for a two stroke engine but if mean effective pressure is expressed in terms of bar, then the equations become like this for a four stroke engine and a two stroke engine respectively. Okay. So that is all about the indicated power, which is nothing but the power which is generated inside the cylinder. Now we will see what is the meaning of uh, brake power. Now generally what happens is we are not interested in indicated power at all. And it is next to impossible to measure indicated power. We can only theoretically calculate indicated power but when our students uh, you know when they come to fifth semester or sixth semester they have uh, something called as energy lab where they work on uh, ic engines uh, again indicated power they are going to calculate using the equations only but brake power is very interesting brake power they can actually measure some values and uh, you know find out what is the brake power so how is it done i'll, I'll just show you uh, the way it is uh, calculated Okay, now what we'll do is, we'll assume that this is the crankshaft. Okay, this is finally going to come out of the engine and this is the crankshaft. I want to measure how much power this uh, you know, crankshaft contains, which will give me the brake power. So the power available at the crankshaft is called as the brake power. And, and we need to uh, have different ways and means of uh, uh, measuring it. So generally, the, the, the easiest way in which it is done is, what they do is, to this, they are going to mount a drum, okay? There is going to be a drum, which is called as the brake drum. It is called as a brake drum. Now, around this brake drum, there is some rope which is wound. You take a rope and you know, wind it. One end, you fix it. 
okay and and before fixing what you can do is uh, you can also have maybe a spring balance here and then fix it so you know what is a spring balance it is going to show uh, you know how much load is being applied and at the other end of the rope you know after you wind obviously it will have two loose ends one end you connect a spring balance and then fix it the bottom end to that you fix what is called as a weight hanger okay so there is going to be a hanger here on which you can place weights okay so you can place uh, different sized uh, weights on this now when i increase the weights what is actually happening is it is like you know tightening the noose okay i am i'm tightening it this anyway cannot be changed there is a force in the upward direction this is a force in the downward direction that means i am trying to break the system okay so you know what is breaking deceleration to slow down so i am trying to slow down this so you know what we do is uh, uh, by applying different loads uh, you know we try to calculate what is the net load on the brake drum find out what is the torque and then you know we can calculate the brake power so let's say the spring balance reading is s okay and let's assume that it is in newtons similarly the weight which is applied here w is also in newton so what is the net weight which is acting the net weight which is the, or the net load which is acting on the brake drum is w minus s newtons okay now what is the torque uh, i have drawn the front view let's say the other view will be something like this so this is the brake drum uh, here you have put that hanger on which weights are placed and here you have put the spring balance and uh, you have fixed it and around this circumference of the brake drum you have um, uh, you know wound the rope and uh, this is the crankshaft on which the uh, brake drum is mounted so uh, what is the torque now torque is again force into distance the net load is nothing but w minus s and the distance so this distance is nothing but if i take it as r small r so this is going to give me the torque so torque is equal to w minus s into r now uh, if the values of w and s that is this load and this whatever it is uh, showing if these values are already in newtons and if the value of r is in meters if i take this is in meters then the units will be newton meter the units will be newton meter but in case you know sometimes these values are instead of giving them in newtons they are given in kgs this is given in kg and this is given in kg so how do you convert kg into newton you are going to multiply it by 9.81 so here you know if the values are given in kg then the same equation becomes 9.81 into this value okay because w minus s uh, which is in kgs you want to convert that into newtons because we are dealing with uh, si units and brake power is given by brake power is nothing but 2 pi n t divided by 60 into 1000 again let's see uh, uh, what is why did we divide it by 60 we divided by 60 because the crankshaft speed if you remember n was nothing but the crankshaft speed which was in rpm so to convert this into rps that is revolutions per second we are dividing it by 60 and uh, 1000 because we want to convert uh, directly into kilowatt the brake power into kilowatt so what are the units now Uh, of course the pi does not have any units what is the unit of n n is per second because we have already divided by 60 revolutions per second that revolutions is forgotten so i write it as per second what is the unit of t t is nothing but newton meter now if you see the unit here newton meter per second this is exactly the same what we had in case of indicated power newton meter per second and newton meter one newton meter per second is 1 watt and since i have already divided it by 1000 what i'll get is the final units of brake power will be in terms of kilowatt again okay so the brake power is always given by this equation now here uh, you know do not confuse between two stroke four stroke and so on whatever may be the kind of engine brake power calculation will remain the same 
it is going to be 2 pi nt by 60 to 1000 kilowatt also sometimes you know in order to confuse you uh, the value of n they may give it in rps only directly they may say that uh, the crankshaft is rotating at so many revolutions per second so if it is already given in revolutions per second make sure that you don't divide it by 60 okay that is one thing second thing is in some cases in some books when they have solved the problem what they have done here is uh, torque value itself what they do is w minus s into r they divide it by 1000 here only so when they divide it by 1000 here only the units will be kilo newton meter so kilo newton meter per second is nothing but again kilowatt so if you do it here you don't have to divide it by 1000 uh, once again here if t is in only newton meters then you have to divide it by 1000 in order to get the uh, final value of brake power in uh, uh, kilowatt so now we have understood how to calculate uh, indicated power for a four stroke engine indicated power for a two stroke engine and brake power now this entire arrangement in fact as i said once the college opens up i will show you i will take you to the engine lab and show you this you know uh, uh, arrangement uh, this is actually called as something called as a dynamometer okay the name for this is dynamometer okay so this is a brake drum dynamometer similarly see it is basically we are loading this loading this means we are trying to retard the crankshaft you can do it in many ways you can have a, a, a prony brake dynamometer this is a simple wheel drum dynamometer you can have a, a electrical dynamometers also okay there are dynamometers uh, uh, where you know you, you keep on switching on the bulbs uh, as you switch on the bulbs the electric load increases as the load increases you know this is going to retard and so on uh, don't worry about all that you can only remember that the name of this arrangement which is used is nothing but a dynamometer it is a brake drum dynamometer uh, this is the crankshaft that is this shaft which i have shown here it comes out and on this i am going to mount a brake drum so on the brake drum i am going to uh, wind a certain rope and uh, you know then do the calculation also also in some cases now while deriving this equation uh, we have written that uh, torque is equal to w minus s into r now sometimes it so happens that the rope diameter is also given okay so whatever rope we have bound the rope diameter is also given okay so if i uh, denote the rope diameter as let's say small rd then what will happen here is this is going to be r plus the radius of the rope okay the rope may be so much so much thick but the radius of the rope which is nothing but rd so here this equation becomes w minus s into r plus rd okay this is only if the rope uh, diameter is given if the rope diameter is not given that means it is uh, uh, conveniently uh, neglected so we are going to only use the value of r okay so uh, uh, by by uh, looking at the various uh, you could say uh, dimensions that are given in the problem we can solve uh, any type of uh, problem and uh, uh, once we find out what is the brake power and the uh, indicated power uh, we can find out what is the mechanical efficiency so, okay so we know that mechanical efficiency is nothing but brake power divided by indicated power into 100 in, and in some cases simple uh, they will ask what is the frictional power so frictional power is nothing but the indicated power minus brake power once you remember these equations uh, any any kind of uh, permutation and combination they may give in the problem uh, you should be able to you know solve those problems okay there are a couple of uh, uh, things which are still remaining so what i'll do is i'll, I'll, I'll stop now and uh, uh, i will share uh, a word file which contains all the numericals so before we go into solving those numericals uh, i will try to discuss a few more points and then one by one you know make sure that all of you have a copy of that uh, uh, you know word file where problems are there so I'm going to pick the problems from, from that only and then uh, you know solve it here on the board okay so yes uh, we will we will conclude the lecture now thank you yeah thank you very much